Research suggests that 95% of the time, an electric vehicle has a lower impact on the climate than a gas vehicle. Are you in this 95%? And what about all the other negative impacts a car can have? In this video, I'll compare the different impacts to both make and drive an electric vehicle with that of a gas vehicle so you can figure out which option is best for you. The climate impact of making and driving electric vehicles depends heavily on where they are made and where they are used, so the best option for you may not be the best option for someone else. The impact of making the body or the glider of electric cars and gas cars are nearly the same. The powertrain or the parts that make the vehicle move forward are a bit different because some of the parts needed in electric vehicles have a bigger impact. So the impact to make a gas vehicle is about 5,000 kilograms of CO2 equivalent, but for an electric vehicle, we still need to factor in the battery, which is one of the most impactful parts of making an electric vehicle. The exact amount changes a bit based on the type of battery that is being created, although usually not by much. Rather, a much more influential impact on battery manufacturing is where the battery is manufactured. This is because much of the impact to create the battery comes from the electricity used at the manufacturing location. Since many batteries are made in China, where coal use is high, the impact of manufacturing a battery is high as well. As you can see here, the electric grid in the US is much cleaner than that of China's because it uses less coal and more renewables and natural gas, which burns cleaner than coal. So just by manufacturing batteries in the US instead of China lowers the impact of battery manufacturing by about two to three times, all without changing anything about the materials used to make the car or how the car is manufactured. Different studies show different results, but the impact of manufacturing each kilowatt hour of battery capacity creates about 30 to 500 kilograms of CO2 equivalent depending on where it's manufactured. So this means cars with bigger battery capacities will also have a larger impact. It also means if you know where any battery was manufactured and the size of that battery, you can figure out its impact. To do so, simply take the value from this chart for the country the battery is made in and multiply it by the size of the battery. So for example, to figure out the impact to create a battery for the Tesla Model 3 in the US that has a 52 kilowatt hour capacity, we simply take the value for producing a single kilowatt hour battery capacity in the US and multiply it by the 52 kilowatt hour battery capacity. As you can see, Creating this battery would also create about 2,340 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. Now that we know the impact of the battery, we can go back and add it onto the glider and powertrain to find the total. You can do this with any model of electric vehicle to see what the impact is to make that particular model. Roughly, the amount of carbon emissions to create electric vehicles around the world is as low as 7,100 to nearly 65,000 kilograms. The average in the US is about 9,000 kilograms, the average in Europe about 10,000 kilograms, and the average in China around 13,500 kilograms. These numbers will change over time as grids become cleaner. With all this in mind, this can all be pretty confusing. So be sure to check out our article in the description for up-to-date information and tools to determine the impact of making any electric vehicle. So far, we've only covered the impact to make each car. In order for electric vehicles to be the better option in terms of climate change, Electric vehicles need to be powered by sources of energy that produce much less emissions during their actual use compared to gasoline to make up for their higher production emissions. Starting with gasoline, we can go through some quick math to figure out the amount of emissions that are produced per mile when driving a gas car. To keep it simple, gas cars each use gas with different fuel efficiencies. If you know the fuel efficiency, you can figure out the amount of carbon emissions that will be produced each mile by dividing 8,887 by the fuel efficiency. Therefore, the average gasoline car will emit about 342 grams of emissions per mile. In order for electric cars to be the better option, they need to be powered by sources of electricity that emit less than this amount per mile. The electricity used in electric cars can be generated by fossil fuels, which leads many people to think electric cars are dirtier than gas cars. However, even if a gas car and a power plant use the same fuels such as gasoline, a power plant is usually much more efficient at turning fuel into power and it's easier to control emissions from a single source rather than multiple sources. In addition, certain fossil fuels used in power plants such as natural gas burn cleaner than gasoline. Electricity can also be generated from completely emission-free sources as well. Even if you account for the emissions to produce renewable energy systems, they will still produce much less emissions per mile than any fossil fuel option. The emissions to generate a single kilowatt hour of electricity from wind power is about 9 grams of CO2, and the emissions for solar power is about 65 grams of CO2. Compare that with natural gas at 490 and coal at 820. 
we can again do some quick math, which you can see more detail about in the article in the description. As you can see, the impact of each mile driven in an electric vehicle is better than that of a gas vehicle, no matter the fuel source. This means the cleaner the source of your electricity and the further you drive, the faster an electric vehicle will become the better option and make up for its higher manufacturing impact. Using all of this information, we can actually plot the exact point at which electric vehicles become the better option. Wherever you see two lines cross, it means the vehicle associated with the now lower line has become the better option at that exact point. So for example, this means an electric car made in the US that was charged with wind power will have produced less overall emissions than a gas car at about 12,000 miles, including the emissions from manufacturing both cars. At the other end, we can see that even if your car is powered by coal, this break-even point occurs at about 45,000 miles if it was made in the US. If your car was made in China, this is pretty much the exact point at which a car powered by electricity generated from wind power becomes the better option. And it wouldn't be until about 167,000 miles if your car was made in China and powered by coal that it would become the better option. Now these are all just possibilities. You would need to figure out where you fall into this range based on where you live, the car you drive, and how much you drive. Today's cars will drive about 150,000 miles in their lifetime, so it's expected that the average car in most countries on the road today will have a lower climate impact than gas cars since most places are not completely powered by coal. It's estimated that 95% of the world would lower its emissions by using electric cars without using any extra renewable electricity. If you don't know exactly which sources your electricity comes from, you can again check out our article in the description or our app. Simply put in information about where you live and will help you figure out the emissions produced and the best option for you. Of course, if your area is powered more by renewables such as solar power, this break-even point will occur sooner. And on that note, whether you have an electric vehicle or not, solar can help reduce your fossil fuel usage and save money. To learn more about going solar, visit Energy Sage with the link below to find licensed, insured, and vetted solar installers in your area. Energy Sage offers a 100% online, unbiased, and free experience. They will also connect you with an energy advisor who can answer any questions you have and help decide which installer is right for you. Now, of course, there are many other impacts electric vehicles have, for example, impacts on water, ecotoxicity, and creation of air pollutants. These other impact areas are so dependent on how clean an energy system is that we can group them into three categories. Those where electric vehicles are already better than gas vehicles, no matter which energy source was used to manufacture or drive the car. Those where electric vehicles could be better, depending on the energy sources used. And those where electric vehicles will need some overall improvements before they are equal to or better than gas cars. You can learn more about some of these topics in my other videos. Now this might sound like a lot of bad indicators, so I'll spend a bit of time on them. But overall, regardless of these impacts, studies still show that thousands of human lives would be saved and medical costs would be significantly reduced as a result of using electric vehicles, even without doing anything to make them less impactful than they are today. Metal use and mineral depletion is a topic that gets a lot of attention when it comes to electric vehicles. Metals are used to make batteries and there is a concern that we won't have enough metals for all of our future needs and that their impact has negative social and environmental impacts. While these concerns are valid, battery technology is always changing and it's possible to substitute metals that are scarce and controversial now with metals that are more abundant and mined with safer practices. In addition, if you buy an electric vehicle today, you will likely not need another battery for about 8 to 10 years, maybe even more. This means by the time you need a new battery, there could be entirely new battery technology and supply chains. Much of the toxicity indicators are worse for electric cars because they use more metals. Much processing is needed to get the metals out of rock, and this processing is usually powered by dirtier sources of energy. In addition, all of the unused materials left over once metals are extracted are put back into the environment. However, since they have been crushed and processed, the other minerals within them are more available. This makes it much easier to pollute waterways through rain runoff and cause unwanted plant growth and algae blooms known as eutrophication. So by creating better mining practices such as preventing waste and monitoring nutrient runoff, these impacts can be greatly lowered. Check out this video next if you want to learn more about how electric vehicles compare to gas vehicles in terms of total cost, driving range, driverless features, and so on. You can also check out my video on the electric vehicle tax credit to see how you can save thousands on an electric vehicle. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking the like button and subscribing to Go Green Post. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.